Marcello, it includes Julia, and it includes her own husband. In other words, she embraces all of them. The potential, she has the potential for loving honestly and directly all of them. So in that film, the fear of love wins. That's the way, the way to put it. Marcello is just too afraid to follow the inspiration of Anna. In, uh, Cavani, in Cavani's film, Max and Lucia experience their love more deeply as they meet again in Vienna in 1957. They become aware that a world <laughs> where it is safe to love is the only world where they would choose to live. So Cavani's gaze affirms the force of love in a way that Bertolucci does not. Why? My claim is that this is possible cinematographically because Cavani chooses to have multiple organs from where the memories emanate. When these minds come together, the trains of memory meet, the consciousnesses connect, trust begins, and love for love wins over the fear of love. And here I have parallel clipping so that you see how the diegesis evolves in each film and you can follow my comparison. This is um, the root directory of, we don't have sound, huh? Did we try the sound? Oh, 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 oh it's here. It's this. Should we no. No, we didn't try the sound. Ah. Okay. We're not going to have any sound. Hmm. I forgot that. I forgot that. Okay. okay, I'll have to go. Okay. It's, right. it's running. Ball, you know. But it's not picking up. It's not picking up. Because right. we didn't connect. This. There it is. Oh, there's something. Is it? Okay. It's, no. No, because we didn't connect this. Oh, sorry. I don't know how effective it's going to be, but let's try it. Okay. Okay. Can you see the subtitles? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, in this clipping, you see that Marcello is beginning his chauffeur trip from um, Paris to Savoy. In Savoy is where the ambush is going to happen. Uh, to the professor, and uh, the chauffeur is the one who the fascist regime makes sure, help, uses to make sure that the murder is accomplished. And he knows now that uh, Anna is in the car with the professor, so that they'll have to kill her. Consider that Marcello was hoping that she would stay in Paris so they would only kill the professor, and his secret hope was that she would run away with him to Brazil. So now he knows that there's nothing he can do to save um, Anna. And this is at the end of this trip. This is where the sound would be very important because you see, uh, you hear Anna's screams. They are very um, hurtful, very acute screams where she's really, they're desperate asking him to open the door at the side of the ambush where her husband is now being killed, and then eventually she will be killed by the thugs um, a few minutes later. But Marcello sits there and does absolutely nothing. That's where I say, you know, love for love wins, clearly. Um, okay, this are, these are two images of uh, Lucia. Lucia, when she arrives, you can see that she's really donned as a, as a naive teenager, probably a virgin from a fairly good family. Um, and then very quickly, she transforms into this expert BDSM dancer who entertains the officers. And clearly this transformation happens through the entrustment between her and Max that happens in the camp where how she, he approaches her and gradually creates this, this space of entrustment where she begins to, to trust him and follow his initiations since she has lost all the rights anyway, so she has nothing to lose. <laughs> okay, and this, uh, this is the clipping where the sound is not very important. This is Lucia now married to a conductor of the orchestra coming to Vienna uh, to play the magic flute. And here is where the first time that Max sees that that's Lucia, and you see how he's already distressed. He, he can't quite do his job very well, but then, 
a minute later, you will see the mag magnetism of the gaze. When the gazes meet on screen, we know that there's something in the energy field between these two people that you know will unfold in the film's diegesis because it's just very powerful. Okay, and this is the end of the diegesis where Max and Lucia have had the time to explore their connection in his apartment, and they are besieged by the groups of Nazis who want to file away all the witnesses and want, want Max's cooperation in that. And then they finally decide that this world is not a world where they want to live, so they leave the apartment. And these are the 26 minute, seconds of freedom that they have, because at the end of this clipping, the, their enemies, uh, especially Hans, uh, shoots them. So this is what they embrace. They embrace that uh, love for love that they've decided not to betray, not to be afraid of. OK. So here's another take on my claim that the intent of both films is to retrieve the presence of love for love. And also another word for that is erotophilia in the toxic ecosystem. So Bertolucci's diegesis, though, is arborescent. All the memories are retrieved from one mind. Arborescent, it's like a tree. Anna and Marcello's organs are not connected cinematically, so Marcello never understands the inclusive and fluid nature of Anna's love. Cavani's diegesis is rhizomatic. The two main organs are equal in their force of memory retrieval. We observe how Max and Lucia's memories are similar. When their bodies connect again, the two threads of remembrance meet, they become interwoven. The lovers find again the connectedness that soars the wish to survive in the latter. This force is alive between them. They understand the fluid, inclusive nature of their love and choose to re-experience it. And here I have a bit of a diagram of this, this root directories and the, the diegetic, diegetic a structure. So with the conformist, this is the root directory. It's Marcello's mind during the trip from Paris to Savoy, the day of the, when in the evening then the ambush occurs. And he makes an effort to really remember, but how did I get myself into this fix? Now that Anna is not running away with me to Brazil, but rather I have to just witness her killing, you know, what is it that where is it that I failed, right? So that's how all the memories, all the flashbacks originate from his mind during this trip, the root directory. In Cavani's film, she organizes these directories in very different ways. These are the minds of Max and then the mind of Lucia, and both are root directories. Okay, first we see the convergence in their separate efforts of memory retrieval. We see that there is an overlap. He remembers filming her. She remembers being filmed by him. He remembers saving her from watching the sodomy scene. She remembers him initiating her sexually in a different way. And then, after their bodies meet, after they, they become uh, sexual with each other again, that's when their minds think align in a more aligned way. And then the memories that they retrieve since then are shared memories so that they can have this whole memory. Okay. So these are very quick clippings, and I'm not going to show you the entirety of them, but you can see that this woman in the, in the um, this office of the fascist minister, she has the face of uh, Dominique Sandar. It's the same actress. She's not Anna. But this is a premonition that this woman who would sexually awaken Marcello would come into his life. And remember that Anna is bisexual, so for Marcello, uh, and she's proud of it, whereas Marcello is really afraid of his bisexuality, so that's the power of Anna toward Marcello, that she is not afraid of being who she is. And this is another image of Anna in a different location. But again, this is not Anna, but the premonition of a woman, important woman coming into his life. Here we see how Cavani organizes this initial memory retrieval process. This is, you've seen the, the scene where Max and Lucia's gazes meet. So this is what happens to, to uh, 
um, acts. You see how he's distressed and the movement image follows his distressed face, but then at some point jumps into his inner landscape. And so we see it, the camera photographs what he remembers. And he remembers, of course, donning this uniform and filming, like being the documentarist of the camp. Okay. This is what happens to Lucia after that meeting of the gazes. She's in her room with her husband, and the husband calls for some water. And of course, she knows that probably Max will come uh, upstairs to bring the water. So she runs into the bathroom. She runs into the bathroom, but it doesn't make any difference. She still is, you know, the camera jumps into these um, processes of memory retrieval and we see that she remembers being filmed. There's another interesting memory, again, being filmed, but then there is this memory of when she, in her memory, we see that her uh, disrupted teenage years and the, the camp Coincide. In other words, she remembers being shot at the Luna Park, but you don't get shot at Luna Park. So, um, but then again, we see a correspondence. She is being filmed. She remembers filming him, filming her. We see a certain convergence. Okay. Okay. So this is a short clipping as this memory retrieval process happens, and the camera investigates it as this tool that is researching love for love. Uh, this is a very quick clipping where, where the, the two persons' gazes meet again. And this is on the background that you won't hear of um, uh, The Magic Flute by Mozart, which is a, 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 an opera about love. And this is apparently the scene where the two lovers meet again. The conductor is Lucia's husband. Max is sitting in a seat. He has secured a seat. and. This is the second meeting of the gazes. Okay. So the second meeting of the gazes, the process of memory retrieval goes deeper. And we see what Max remembers. Max remembers that Lucia was watching in the common room a scene of sodomy. The other prisoners were also watching. Scene of sodomy at the rhythm of the magic flute. Trust me, it's very interesting how the music enters the scene. So she's watching, and he comes. Oh, gosh, sorry. He comes into the room, dressed as a doctor. Yeah, dressed as a doctor, and takes her out of this scene. Clearly, there could be a danger that she would be end up being sodomized. To, or simply the fact of watching maybe a sexual act that isn't just age appropriate for her since she is so young. So what she remembers is that he did take her out, but he took her to another room where there was another scene. So he chained her. Um, and notice that she still really has a prisoner aspect and he still wear, is wearing the uniform. So he does initiate her sexually in ways that some might claim are less violent than sodomy for somebody who is not well versed in sexual practices, even though I have nothing against sodomy per se. Uh, and she, he initiates her with, uh, with the fingers in this way. So these are the two converging memories. This is another very interesting scene where uh, Lucia realizes that uh, there, there is this convergence of ex-Nazi officers in Vienna and that they want to file away all the witnesses and that Ma Max is resisting, but she can't be sure that he will actually resist. So she calls her husband because all of a sudden she wants to get out of Vienna and follow him in Frankfurt. She calls him. And then what happens is very interesting. When she has called him, she puts down uh, the receiver and watch now here the, the time image, how the movement image becomes time image. She's thinking and he appears and here he is not in a uniform. 
is dressed in civil suits. Remember that an officer was not supposed to do this in a, in a camp. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a scene where he becomes a little human for her. She still has the prisoner dejected affect. He cancels her call to Frankfurt, because at this point he wants to know why she is in Yemen, why she stayed in Yemen and didn't follow her husband. So these are the two clippings from the first time that Anna and Marcello meet physically, and then the first time that Lucia and Max meet physically. You will see that Marcello pushes himself on Anna. She tells him that she suspects him, that she thinks he works for the secret police. Uh, he tells her that he had premonitions that a woman like her would come in his life. And then he pushes himself on her. You will see it in a moment. He pushes himself on her. And then a few seconds later, we see that she's actually responding to his kiss. It's one of those gray areas where you don't know if it's a yes or a no. This is a clipping from the scene where Max has gone up to Lucia's room because he wants to find out why are you doing, why, why are you in Vienna now? Are you, you know, putting me in a position where I have to give you up to these uh, people who want to kill you? So here too, the audio would be useful because they are both infuriated. And here is my reading. Each one is fighting the fear of love in the other person because clearly each one is afraid of the consequences of this meeting on the other and on themselves. They both have a sort of quiet life. You know, she's married, he's a night porter. And uh, you see that you could categorize this as rape, but then Max is raping Lucia as much as Lucia is raping Max. <laughs> and so then it's hard to call it rape when they're both playing basically a game of reconnecting and overcoming the fear. You will see that at one point, she's really the one who pulls him down. So she pulls him down, and here we have an, well, the ecosystems reconnect. Then there is no turning back. And, uh, they now, the time image will dominate their lives, and they will want to re-experience what they had in the past. In this scene, we see that Anna, that on both, in both films, there is this attempt, particularly here it's Anna, who tries to connect everybody's ecosystem and, and create a situation where, oh yeah, this is the scene when, where Anna tells Mar Marcello that she knows who he is. He proposes escaping to Brazil, and she disrobes for him and uh, asks him not to hurt them. He says, you know, can you please promise not to hurt me and my husband? She's telling him, you know, I, I love you and I love my husband and please don't hurt us. Can you promise that? And he doesn't promise. He doesn't make that promise. Hold me, I'm frightened. He says, don't hurt us. <laughs> I'm frightened. Don't hurt us, she asks, for that promise. This is what could be called a scene Okay, here is where the memories converge. Remember in my diegetic um, chart where the, the two have met physically and now they're in his home and the memory really emanates from both of them contemplating the mirror. And what they see in the mirror is Lucia donning a dress, a pink dress, that is similar to the dress that he gave her as an entrustment gift to humanize a bit her life in the camp. So that's where the movement image emanates from this mirror. And here we see Lucia still with a prisoner affect. And we see him with a uniform. 
and with this pink dress that, you know, she lets him don this dress on her. This, these are scenes where we see what what these characters who love expansively beyond monogamy and homosexuality, what they have to invent to really manifest their love. Here we see Anna, who is aware that Julia, Marcello's wife, is bisexual, that she has had experiences with women, and perhaps one of the, her desires in coming to Paris is to experience some of that. And so she touches her sensually, she seduces her a bit, and then when Julia wants to stop, she stops, and then she dresses her. And all of this, remember, emanates from Marcello's memory because he is watching. Remember that Marcello, too, is searching for this self, able to love beyond monogamy on monosexuality. He is watching, and Anna is very well aware that he is watching. You see that she's looking back because Marcello is watching from the door. And Julia is very exhilarated because finally she has all this freedom. She's in Paris. She's not in, you know, in the clutches of her regime, homophobic regime. So this is the other scene where um, we see that for Max and Lucia, they have to get each other to bleed in order to retrieve a more genuine memory of this love for love. So they experience, remember, love for love in this torturous system. So they have to kind of go there again. So she got him to bleed because she broke all these crystals on the floor, and then he gets her to bleed. And that's when the memory begins, the, the time image jump. Okay, and in this time image, you see that she is loving him. He doesn't have a uniform, he's in civil clothes, and she is actively loving him. And this is followed, for those of you who know the film, is followed by the famous scene where she makes love to him on top, and they're in his apartment. And it's the last love scene you see in that film. Okay, I'm coming to the conclusion. Uh, this first clipping is the dinner that the four have the night before the ambush. You will see that here comes the proposal of the professor. The professor thought Marcello was a good student. There was that student professor to the unfulfilled desire between them. Um, and uh, the professor proposes, you know, you don't, you don't have to go back to that toxic ecosystem. You could join the, the resistance here in uh, Paris and you would have a lot to learn still. Be, continue to be a good student. But Marcello won't do that. That's where I say, you know, that love for love loses. The proposal comes at the end. You will understand a great deal about many things living here. So in a way, uh, both quadris are telling these murderers, <laughs> or this murder, you know, they're saying, sit at the table with us. There is a room for you if you give up the toxic ways that you've learned. But they don't follow it. Julia is really not in the picture. She doesn't know what's happening, but Marcello obviously doesn't accept the invitation. This, this is a parallel scene in Max's apartment. Lucia realizes that they're besieged, that you know there's no food, the power lines have been cut off, and the minute they go out by, for necessity, they will be killed. So she says, for how long is it going to go on? For how long, she says. And he says, you can stop in a minute for you. Call the police. If you call the police and you say you're being held hostage by an you know, ex-Nazi officer in 1957, I will be arrested and all my other Nazi fellow, you know, fellow <laughs> Nazis will be arrested. But she doesn't do that. That's where you see that love for love wins. Okay, and this is probably the, one of the last clippings. Uh, this is at, almost at the ambush scene, at the end of that um, root directory where the trip to Savoy is almost finished. And even the chauffeur realizes that Marcello is distressed because they'll have to kill this woman. And he says, perhaps love will perform a miracle. But love does not perform a miracle. This is um, Bert and Hans. Hans is Max's arch enemy. He really wants 
hands to it if he really wants Max either to surrender Lucia or be killed with her. And Bert is a gay dancer who had a crush on Max. Max never turned him down, but now he's more busy with Lucia. And Bert doesn't quite get that, so he thinks he has lost Max. And so he becomes an ally of Abraham's. I've lost him, he says. Okay. This is the scene you've already seen, where Anna pleads with Marcello, open the door, uh, save me or save us. And she is horrified by his indifference. Trentin Young is an amazing actor. I don't know if you saw him in Amour. He's still the same. He still plays the same characters. He's amazing. OK, and this scene is very quick, so I'm going to explain it to you. The first car has Max at the wheel and, and Lucia in the passenger seat. The car that follows has Hans at the wheel and Bert in the passenger seat. So Max is driving, and he sees in the mirror Bert. He knows who is in the car and why they're being followed. He could open, stop the car, drop Lucia out of the car, and proceed. But he doesn't do it. So what is erotophilia in cinema? It's the practice of cinema that studies the presence of love for love in devitalized ecosystems, including humans. The possibility of this practice is related to artistic freedom in the production system. The European practice of auteur cinema or cinema d'autore is one way of protecting this freedom. The success of strategies that employ this system depend on an auteur's willingness to share authority, allow the force of love itself to connect sheets of the past, including energy fields between characters, shared memories, and past existences. Cavani brings to the role of auteur her experience as a woman with an enhanced awareness of interdependence, symbiosis, and sustainability. Her direction brings together the inner awareness, awareness that Lucia and Max share and offers a view of how love for love can persist in the most extreme circumstances. So here's the epistemic horizon for cinema that I want to open with my work. Cinema can be the 20th century.